Hi guys, Ian Johnson from driversuccess.com. Today I want to talk to you guys about performing a break-even analysis. And specifically, I want to focus predominantly on the profit contribution portion of the analysis. And what I've done here today is I've basically accounted for expenditures, number of units sold. Um, I've accounted for fixed costs, variable costs. I've uh, defined the conditions in terms of what's included in the actual calculation for break-even. And I'm going to explain the calculation, fixed costs, variable costs, these lines and how we arrive to break even. Okay? But before I get to that, I just want to basically reiterate that I had done a video a while back about the importance of accounting for profit within your hourly rates as a contractor, small business owner, or entrepreneur, or what have you. Um, and it's actually one of the biggest mistakes that new business owners make and entrepreneurs make when they first start out. You know, they account for their hourly salary, they account for their direct and indirect expenses, they understand overhead but they ignore the importance of accounting for profit within their hourly rates. Now, that, that may be obvious to you. Uh, it may be a bit of a surprise to hear that people don't account for profit, but it actually happens quite often. So it's a good video to review. Um, it, the link has probably appeared above my head a couple of seconds ago. The video will show you how to go about determining your hourly rates. Uh, we'll account for direct and indirect expenses, uh, hourly salary and profit. It'll include a table and it'll include a link to my website where you can actually access that table and play around with, with uh, the, the formula to determine your own hourly rate. And the reason why I bring up that video is because I want to, you know, continue on the same narrative about focusing on profit. And the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm doing the profit contribution portion of the analysis and talking about it is because there's actually two ways to determine your break-even point, okay? Uh, one way, basically, is a company will account for its fixed costs. They'll have a straight line across because the costs are fixed. And then they'll have a variable cost line. And then they'll combine their fixed costs and their variable cost line into one total cost line. And then they'll basically account for revenue, which are the number of units they've sold. And they'll wait until the revenue intersects that total cost line in order to determine their break-even point. Okay, so that's one way. I have not done it that way, okay? I'm doing it a way where you account for the profit contribution as a portion of the analysis and you account for that within this line right here and I'm going to show you how we do it, okay? So first off, I want to talk to you guys about fixed costs. I'm going to keep this example as simple and straightforward as I possibly can. So fixed costs, I've said monthly salaries, $1,500, rent, $500, miscellaneous, $200, very simple. And when you think about fixed costs, you know, going back to that video that I mentioned earlier, these are kind of your indirect expenses. These are expenses that basically can't be uh, attributed or linked or charged to a given product or service or to a specific customer, but they are expenses that you have to cover nonetheless. So they're basically expenses that you, you have to cover no matter who you're working for, okay? Variable costs, these are like direct expenses. These are costs that are attributed to a product or service, and in this case we're talking about a product so we're talking about raw materials, 100, labor, 200. Again, I've kept it simple. So we know what our fixed costs are. We know what our variable costs are. And this is the fixed cost line, okay? This dotted line right here is exactly at 2,500. This dotted line goes all the way across. That's our fixed cost line, okay? So I'm just going to designate it as such. Fixed costs, 2,500, okay? Now I'll go over the actual break-even equation and how you perform the analysis, okay? So break-even equals BE, fixed cost equals F, price, in this case we're selling a product, equals dollar sign P, variable cost equals V, and here's the equation. Break-even equals fixed cost divided by the price of the product minus the variable cost, and this portion, in parentheses, is the profit contribution, okay? So I will basically highlight that. This is the profit contribution, price minus variable costs. And this is why I want to bring attention to this. Okay? Now, why do I want to focus on this profit contribution? Well, I'll give you an example. Let's say you're a, a small business owner or you're basically, let's say you own a restaurant. Okay? You have to know how many people you have to service in a given day in a given week, in a given month, in a given quarter in order to break even, okay? So you have to basically know how many people you have to serve. You know, you can even break it down to the point where you know 
how much each table has to bring in in terms of, of revenue in order to break even. And that basically equates to the profit contribution. Okay, so if you, if you break it down that way and you, you look at how many people do I have to service in my restaurant in order to break even, you know, that basically allows you to focus on how you do that. And I want to focus on that because when it comes to the profit contribution, your employees have to know how many units have to be sold and what number of units are sold in order to break even. And you should understand that. Okay? So I'm going to give you a quick example of how we get to this break even point. So we're going to assume that this company is selling a product for $525. So we're just going to plug everything in to the equation. Okay? Fixed costs, as we said, are $2,500. Okay? They're right here. The price is $525. Okay? Now we're going to minus our variable costs, which are $300. And this break-even is going to equal $2,000. $500 divided by $225, which is basically 525 minus 300. And when you divide 2,500 by 225, you equal 11 units. So in this case, your break even is equal to 11 units, and that's this point right here. This is your break even. Okay? So. All of this area right here is a loss. The company, until it sells 11 units, it hasn't reached break even, so it's losing money. Everything above 11 units sold is profit. Okay? And what I've done in this case is I've actually, this, this entire uh, process is included on my website, drivesuccess.com. There'll be a link that'll pop up above my head any second now. And it basically includes a sample Excel spreadsheet that allows you to do the break-even analysis, uh, taking into consideration the profit contribution. It actually allows you to plug in different prices and different variable costs in order to determine where you're going to break even. Okay, So you can play around with price and break even or earlier, or you can, reduce, you can play around what happens if you reduce your cost. So the Excel spreadsheet allows you to plug in these numbers. You can do it by price and variable costs, and it'll give you multiple points, and it'll just adjust itself based on the values that you put into the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, it's a good tool to have. However, I just want to basically make one thing clear. It's, this is not a numbers game. It's not merely a question of raising the price on a product in order to break even sooner. It doesn't work that way. A lot of things go into the price of your product or service, costs, obviously, um, but another Another important factor is, is what the market will bear. So it's not just as simple as just raising the price, and I'm sure you understand that. So when it comes to the break-even analysis, if you want to break even earlier, focus on reducing your variable costs and your fixed costs. I've done a lot of videos, video, uh, videos on reducing cycle times in manufacturing as a form of reducing costs and increasing production throughput. So that's where you basically want to focus your efforts. But the reason why I wanted to do this today and specifically focus on the profit contribution is because you really need to understand how many units you have to sell, what the profit contribution is of each unit sold, in order to understand how fast you break even and when you start deriving a profit. So that's it. Break even analysis, profit contribution. Ian Johnson, DriverSuccess.com. Bye-bye.